Why did this war have to happen at all? Because humanity had to be shown where its godlessness was taking it. A quote from Vladislav Spielmann, a talented Polish pianist whose memoirs of the Second World War were adapted for the screen. 2002's The Pianist was a personal magnum opus for Polanski, who himself won the Best Director Oscar and whose own experiences as a boy during the war were woven into the adapted screenplay, which itself won an Oscar, with his mother and father both being sent to concentration camps, his mother dying in Auschwitz. This makes The Pianist an incredibly personal tale, one which blends the memories of its protagonist and the memories of the man behind the production. So let's talk about it. I am going to offer my own analysis and interpretations of the film, discussing key plot details along the way, so there will be major spoilers ahead from here on out. Spielmann here is played by Adrian Brody, who impressively learned the piano for the role, lost a stack of weight on a restricted diet and got rid of vital possessions such as his apartment and car, all to gain a closer understanding of Spielmann's isolated and worn down mind and body. Due to these reasons, as well as putting in a great understated performance, Brody became the youngest recipient of the Best Actor Oscar for the time. The film carries us through Spielmann's journey throughout the Second World War, what he had to endure, but also the horrors that he witnessed and scarred him for life in relation to the Holocaust. The film begins and transports us to Warsaw in 1939, with Spielmann masterfully playing Chopin while being broadcast over the radio, making a living from his skills. The resonating ripples of conflict begin with almost immediate effect, as explosions occur nearby. Right away you get an understanding of how much the piano means to Spielmann as he continues playing despite the explosions. He puts his craft above all other things, and as we see throughout the film, it's his artistry which greatly assists his survival. After the destruction of the studio, Spielmann returns home to his rather large family, who listen to the announcement of the outbreak of the war. It's the reaction of the family here which is retrospectively saddening. They react with delight, as now Poland isn't alone. The news of war brings such relief and joy to the family, yet if they were made privy to everything the years ahead had to bring, their reaction would likely be dramatically different different. However, within this context, all is well and the Poles have nothing to worry about. They're going to be protected. This is until the Nazis occupy Warsaw, and the film rapidly plummets in a spiteful direction. The previously comforted Polish Jews quickly become targets of abuse, in this case literally, being instructed to wear Star of David armbands so that they can be identified as Jews. This is likened to being branded as if they were cattle, which infuriates the Spielmann family, vowing to not wear armbands. However, the threat of punishment for not wearing armbands is put forward, so despite their reservations, they follow the order. It's after this decision where we begin to see the remorselessness of the Nazis in this film, as Spielmann's father wears his armband accordingly, yet is still punished for doing so, being punched in the street and forced to walk in the gutter. Even when playing by the rules as instructed, nobody is truly safe from harm. And as we see later in the film, even asking simple questions in a polite manner can lead to instant death. The world presented here is unforgiving and mindless, where there's a lack of humanity and decency towards the Jews. The worst is yet to come though, as Jewish families are forced into the newly established Warsaw Ghetto. The ghettos have been featured in other war films, such as the the Krakow Ghetto in Schindler's List, and the pianist's rendition further exemplifies the monstrous, careless nature of the ghettos. Poverty and death are all around, lingering thick in the troubled air. People lie dead in the streets, untouched, unthought of, walked past and considered as much as autumn leaves on the ground. Innocent people drop dead and just become part of the scenery, which both highlights the regularity of such events desensitising the Jews while clouding their identities. They're not people, they're debris. It's no wonder why death is such a common occurrence in the ghetto when you see the living conditions. It's overcrowded with far too many people to live comfortably. Barbed wire is used to protect food from being stolen. Food is even fought over and despite being spilled is eaten directly off the ground. 
People are antagonised by the Nazis, being intimidated into dancing for entertainment. They're made a mockery of, because the only options are exploitation or death. The Jewish residents of the ghetto are viewed like rodents, infesting the streets and scavenging for survival. People are even killed with the same consideration you'd give when killing a rodent. In one of the film's most gut-punching scenes, the Spielmann family witness a Jewish family in the opposite apartment. One of this family is a wheelchair-bound man. The only answer to this discovery is eradication, and so the man is picked up and thrown over the balcony. The first time I saw this scene, my heart jumped into my mouth. It was like throwing a piece of rubbish in the bin, except it's not a piece of rubbish. It's a human being, a loved one, a family member, someone with an entire lifetime of cherished memories and experiences, carelessly tossed aside without a second thought. When I think of the pianist, this is the first scene that comes to mind for me. But even though here it's the elderly who are punished, a recurring theme in The Pianist is showing the war's effect on children. I won't be able to show these scenes on screen to keep comments enabled as children are involved, though the way children are used in the film deeply affected me. In the aforementioned scene of the Jews being forced to dance, you can hear the sounds of children whimpering in the background. In another pivotal scene, a young malnourished boy escapes through a small opening in the ghetto wall, yet despite being pulled free by Spielmann, passes away. Later, a woman continuously cries out the phrase, why did I do it? As we learn that she smothered her baby's cries to prevent being heard by the Nazis, but rather than muffling the cries, the Nazis heard the baby's death rattle. Christ, only the story being told here was enough to damage me. No visuals required, just the terms baby and death rattle in relation to each other was enough to disturb me. Except we do occasionally get visuals, with children seen by Spielmann shot dead in the street. People of all ages were affected by the war, yet it was the pianist's use of children which shook me closest to my core. Needless to say, the things Spielmann witnesses in this film as an observer, often behind windows, paints a blood-soaked picture of the horrors of the Holocaust. Anybody can die at any moment. People gunned down in the streets, run over by vehicles, pinned down and shot at random. Bodies are piled up and burned in the streets. The word that comes to mind for me is extermination. The Jews were viewed as vermin, and are treated as such with ruthless force. This extends to the Spielmann family, with Vladislav being separated from the rest as they are piled onto a train heading for the Treblinka camp. Spielmann is able to make a lucky escape due to being recognised by one of the Jewish ghetto police, and ultimately he becomes a slave labourer before making an escape and going into hiding with the help of his non-Jewish friend Andrzej Bogutski, a Polish actor and singer-songwriter. Spielmann bounces from hiding place to hiding place due to becoming discovered, ending up with jaundice, being attacked by snipers and tank shells. Spielmann is able to just about get by in the world due to his reputation. His job playing piano in a restaurant was enough to bring in a bit of money to support his family. Being known in that restaurant gave him a hiding place for a little while. His friendship with Bogutsky got him some further shelter. It's as though his talents really did aid him in receiving help to get him out of sticky situations. It's a sorrowful blessing, as many people don't have the luxury of having a reputation. Most of the Jewish victims of the war were just regular people, who didn't have any kind of reputation they could have used for leverage in the same way Spielmann was able to though he didn't do it with any malicious intent and often falls into these situations by chance. Countless victims of the Holocaust were victims simply because they didn't have a person to care for them in the same way Spielmann was helped by several people. Yet Spielmann is restricted in how he can relish in his love of the piano. Despite hiding away in an apartment with a piano in it, he has to mime a performance without touching the keys, feeling the music through his instincts and muscle memory. He's shackled from expressing himself Himself in his greatest love, otherwise he will be found and killed. Expression of your loves is one of life's great rewards, yet the scenario of the Nazis looming over Poland prevents Spielmann's expression. This is until one of the film's most important scenes. While hiding in a house in the devastated outskirts of Warsaw, Spielmann is found by a Nazi officer, Wilm Hosenfeld, played here by Thomas Kretschmann, a veteran of war films including Stalingrad, which I have previously covered. After Hosenfeld learns Spielmann is a pianist, he invites him to play. In his mind, this is perhaps
perhaps the final time Spielmann will play. He hasn't played properly in years, kept away from his passion and when he finally has the chance to play again, it's witnessed by the enemy. He could play a perfect performance, which he does, yet the possibility of being killed no matter how good he plays is always in the back of his mind. Thankfully, after a masterful performance, Hosenfeld lets Spielmann return to hiding and provides for him until Warsaw is occupied by the victorious Red Army at the end of the war. Spielmann is even nearly killed here as he is wearing a Nazi coat due to the cold, narrowly escaping death even from the direction of safety. Thankfully, Spielmann has survived the war, losing his family in the process though, yet can now return to playing the piano. Sadly, he cannot track down Rosenfeld to thank him for his aid and and we learn in the film's epilogue that he died in Soviet captivity in 1952. Despite having a moral compass and helping Spielmann, he was unable to avoid his own fate, while Spielmann lived to the fantastic age of 88. The Pianist is a crippling insight into one man's perspective of something which devastated millions of all ages, and the film doesn't hold back from making that a point, with children and the aged being just as vulnerable to the Nazis as anyone else, and multiple moments of heartache throughout, what the pianist presents us with is a gloomy and unforgettable tale of survival, and a lot of luck and fortune. It only gets tougher to digest as it goes on, with the film progressively losing its colour, becoming more dull and grey over time, a choice of the director of photography, Pavel Edelman, to reflect the life being drained from the world. By being filmed in Poland, I felt the authenticity, the echoes of the screams in the streets, the reverberation of the ricocheting bullets. To me, The Pianist is nightmare fuel, and a cinematic experience I'll carry with me for the rest of my life, teaching me lessons of a grisly history that can still be felt today. What are your thoughts on The Pianist? Please let me know in the comments below. I've been Connor from Unleash the Ghouls, and thank you very much for watching this edition of Nightmare Fuel. Cheers.